Hey, this video was made just for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The next topic we will learn is called transformation of energy. Can you tell which are the different forms of energy? Earlier also in this chapter we have learned there are different forms of energy like mechanical energy, electrical energy, heat energy, light, sound, chemical etc. Which type of energy is used in each of the following processes? So the first example is a stretched piece of rubber. So here you must have noticed when you stretch the rubber band there is a form of energy that is stored in it and that is because of mechanical energy. A fast moving car. This is because of mechanical or electrical energy. The whistling of a cooker due to steam. So here the cooker has the whistle sound that happens when there is a lot of pressure because of the steam accumulated in it. So this is because of heat energy. The crackers exploded in Diwali. During Diwali when you burst crackers you have to light it using fire. So this is because of heat energy that is transferred into the crackers that causes it to explode. A fan running on electricity. So here when you switch on the switch for a fan, electrical energy is transferred to the fan and that causes the fan to move. Drawing out pieces of iron from garbage using a magnet. So in the garbage they put huge magnets and remove pieces of iron and metal from it. So this is because of magnetic energy. Breaking a glass window pane because of a loud noise. So your sound energy if it is a lot it can cause glass windows to break. Energy can be transformed from one type to another. So in all these examples we have noticed that one type of energy is being transferred and that is tra getting converted to another form of energy. For example, the exploding of firecrackers converts the chemical energy stored in them into light, sound and heat energy. So when you burst crackers, there are some chemicals inside the crackers. So when you apply fire to it, this chemical energy gets transformed into light, sound and heat. And that is what causes the crackers to burst and you can see light and sound you can hear and heat energy. So here they are showing us how one form of energy can be converted into other forms of energy. So for example, when you switch on the engine or a fan, your electrical energy can be transferred to mechanical energy. Also, when you switch on the generator, mechanical energy is transferred to electrical energy. So these are various examples of how one energy is transferred to another energy. Another example is the heater. Your electrical energy is converted into heat energy and thermocouple is where a heat energy is transferred to electrical energy. Also loudspeakers, when you switch on loudspeakers or any form of speakers, electrical energy is converted to sound energy and when you are using microphones, sound energy is converted to electrical energy. Another example is the electrical lamp. Your electrical energy is converted to light energy. Also when you switch on the bulbs in the house, there also electrical energy is converted into light energy. Solar cell or photoelectric cell. You must have noticed solar panels. So in this it absorbs light energy that is delivered by the sun and that gets converted into electrical energy that is used to supply the energy in homes. So a primary cell that is a primary cell battery is used and that converts chemical energy to electrical energy whereas a secondary cell converts electrical energy to chemical energy. So these are few examples. The next topic is law of conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be converted from one form into another. Thus, the total amount of energy in the universe remains constant. So this is a law which is very important. It states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So no matter what type of energy it is, it can never be created from scratch or it cannot be destroyed. Here, it can be converted from one form into another. So you can convert the energy but you cannot create or destroy it. 
that way the total amount of energy in the universe is constant that is it is a fixed amount try this make two pendulums of the same length with the help of a thread and two nuts tie another thread in the horizontal position so here this is one thread and to this thread we have two other threads that have a nut on either side tie the two pendulums in this horizontal thread in such a way that they will not hit each other while swinging so you have to keep some distance between these two threads and we have to make sure that this nut is hanging down now swing one of the pendulums and observe what do you see so when you swing one of them you will see that the speed of oscillation of the pendulum slowly decreases so if you swing this pendulum you will notice that at one point it will go very far but at the next it will go less far and slowly it will come towards the rest the second pendulum which was initially stationary begins to swing thus one pendulum transfers its energy to the other pendulum so once you swing this you will observe that after some time the speed of this pendulum slowly decreases but the other pendulum will now start to move so this is how it tells us that one form of energy is being transferred it is not being destroyed but it is being transferred to another form the next topic is free fall if we release an object from a height it gets pulled towards the earth because of the gravitational force so our earth has gravity and because of which we can walk on earth and if we drop anything from a height it will be pulled towards the earth's surface because of gravitational force an object falling solely under the influence of gravitational force is said to be in free fall or falling freely so if you just release an object and it is pulled towards the earth's surface it is said to be free falling let us look at the kinetic and potential energies of an object of mass m falling freely from height h when the object is at different heights so now let us see what kind of potential energy and what kind of kinetic energy a object of mass m has so as shown in the figure point a is at a height h so this is the surface of the earth point c and point a is at a height h let the point b be at a distance x so point b is at a distance x from point a so they have shown it over here vertically below point a let the point c be on the ground directly below point a and b let us calculate the energies of the object at a b and c so if an object is at a or b or c let us calculate the different kinds of energy that the object will same object will have but at these three different locations the so for the first one first we will find out when the object is stationary that is at rest at point a so when it is at rest that is somebody is suppose holding a ball here at point a initial velocity is zero because it's not moving so therefore the initial velocity we will take it as u and that is zero and we know that kinetic energy is half mass into velocity square so this is a fixed formula and we have to substitute in this formula so we will find out the kinetic energy of the object which is stationary at point a so here it is half into mass of the object which is m and initial velocity is u square but u is zero and anything when you multiply by zero it is zero so because the object is at rest initially the kinetic energy is zero and the potential energy will be mgh that is the formula so the total energy we have to do by adding kinetic and potential energy that is how we find out the total energy so we already found out that the kinetic energy is zero and the potential energy will be mass into gravitational pull into height so zero plus anything is that thing so total energy would be mgh in the first case when the object is stationary at point a 
now the second one is let the velocity of the object be vb when it reaches point b having fallen through a distance x so now suppose a person is holding the ball at point a now they leave it and this ball is falling towards point b now when it reaches point b let us find out what the, the total energy of the ball is so we will calculate the velocity when it reaches point b as vb we will take it as having fallen through distance x we knew that the distance between a and b is x so it fell this much distance initial velocity u was 0 s that is the displacement that took place was x and the acceleration is nothing but the gravitational pull of the earth so we will take the acceleration as g so we know that v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s according to newton's law so when you substitute this we will get v b square because we have to find out the velocity the velocity when it reaches point b was v b so we will substitute it the initial velocity u was 0 and now it is 2 into g into x so v square is equal to 2 g x now we will substitute this value of v square in the formula for kinetic energy so here v square is not 0 therefore kinetic energy will not be 0 and kinetic energy would be half into mvb square but vb square was 2gx and this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled out so what we have left is kinetic energy is equal to mgx now when the height of the object when it reaches point b is h minus x because when we calculate height we have to always calculate it from the surface of the earth so we can't take x as the height because x was the distance from a and b so the distance of the ball when it reaches b from the ground would be h because the total was h minus x so we will substitute that as the height so then we will find out the potential energy which is equal to mg h minus x so we will get the potential energy as mg h minus mg x because M h minus x is in the bracket so mg would get multiplied with h and then you have to put a minus sign and mg x now the total energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy here we had already found out the kinetic energy as mgx so we will write mgx and now potential energy is what we found out here so that is mgh minus mgx so mgx this and this would get cancelled because mgx minus mgx so we will cancel it and what we are left is total energy is mgh so when the ball reaches point B, the total energy it will have is M into G into H. So now the last one is when the ball reaches point C, that is when it hits the surface of the earth. So let the velocity of the object be Vc. So when it reaches the surface of the earth, let the new velocity be Vc. Near the point C, the initial velocity was 0 the displacement now would be h and not x because now it reached all the way down towards the surface of the earth so we have to take it as h and the acceleration would be g because gravitational force does not change now we will use again newton's law and we will find out v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s so here v square would be the velocity when the ball reaches point c that will be v c square and initial velocity was 0 and the 2 a s would be written as 2 g into h because a is g and s is h now when we find out the kinetic energy we will get half into m v c square that is half into m and now this v square we have to substitute 2 g h so we write it down here and again the 2 and 2 would get cancelled and what we are left with is kinetic energy is equal to mgh so now the height of the object from the ground at point c is h is equal to 0 because the ball has reached point c so now there is no height left so h would be 0 
therefore now potential energy would be mgh and since height is zero there is no potential energy because anything multiplied by zero is zero itself so potential energy is zero and when we calculate now total energy that is adding kinetic energy plus potential energy we would get only kinetic energy which we had found out here that is mgh because potential energy is zero so from equations 1, 2 and 3, we see that the total energy of the object is the same as the three points A, B and C. So now we calculated the total energy at point A, point B and point C and everywhere if you notice it is MGH what we calculated here MGH then again your total energy MGH and here finally again your total energy MGH. So that's how we know that energy remains the same. That is, total energy remains the same. Even though kinetic energy and potential energy were changing in all the three points, the total energy was always the same. Thus, every object has potential energy when it is at a height above the ground and it keeps getting converted to kinetic energy as the object falls towards the ground. So, whenever the height was a number and not zero, it the object would always have some of the other potential energy and as it was falling towards the ground it was getting converted to kinetic energy on reaching the ground that was point c all the potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy because that is when the potential energy became zero because there was no more height and all of that got converted to kinetic energy but at any point during the fall the total energy was always constant that is, total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. At point A, the kinetic energy was zero. That's how we got MGH. At point B, it was at a certain height. So again, we got MGH. And again at C, the potential energy was zero. And again, we got MGH. So that is how we knew that total energy always remains constant. That is, it always remains the same. For the answers to this exercise and other free worksheets, please go to jkacademypro.com.